Right then, good morning and welcome back to Tiplo TV. I am the average golfer and down here at Four Golf Chester and I'm doing the video that has been requested in the last week uh, by you people, which is the i500 versus the P790, so the Ping versus the TaylorMade in a bit of a comparison video. i500 probably hits the shops, it's certainly in the likes of Four Golf to try right now. I think it's available to buy delivery wise end of July so very close to getting your hands on them some really good feedback did the review for this one last week lots of positivity some issues perhaps with feel or sound at least I wasn't too keen on that but overall performance wise was uh, was good and the P790 a club that I'm very familiar with as I've got it in the bag in the sort of I've got it in a 654 iron in my bag currently we're going to put 7 iron versus 7 iron in this head to head Real interesting one because they've got identical shafts in and they're identical lofts. These are 30.5. You can do a little bit of different with the i500 in the sort of power spec and, uh, and retro specs as well. So you can get those in different lofts. But for the purposes of the video, we've got identical setup, which is always nice. So I'm going to throw up some images of the two. Worth pointing out at this stage, if you want the in-depth reviews of both of these clubs, then I suggest you watch their individual videos, because all we're going to do today is I'm going to hit a number of shots very, very shortly, try and get, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe ten shots with each, so we've got a fair old comparison. And this is really looking at a couple of things. It's really looking at performance and then feel, because the looks is very much something that is down to the individual. I'll talk about it, but like I said, that's very much, I think, a personal preference thing on these two clubs. Um, but we will start with that. We'll start with how they look. So a couple of images up on screen now for you. There's a lot of similarities with these clubs. One has a sort of satin matte finish. I think it's the chrome finish that the i500 is. It's a matte finish. Whereas the ping, slightly shinier, you can see that sort of strap, that band with the P790 on, nice bit of shiny chrome. But in effect, it's a one piece iron in the fact that there's no cutaway, there's no cavity in the back whatsoever. And like I said, minimalistic in terms of uh, the markings on these clubs, everybody has gone very much down this minimal look right now. Very clean looking golf clubs. And I think both really attractive golf clubs, like I said, it's down to the personal eye as to which you prefer. So before we go too much further, let's look at these clubs from the uh, top line. And a lot of similarities. I would say the P790 has that slightly thicker leading edge top line. Um, slightly more compact look on the i500, but again, minimal, I would say, in the differences between the two. If we have a look at these, and I'll throw these images up now, if we look at these face on, you'll see that the overall profile of the i500 to me seems slightly bigger in terms of the actual face itself, seems slightly higher at the toe end. But like I said, when the clubs are sat behind the ball, not a great deal of difference, and it's very much down to the personal eye. So it's down to now, what to do? Again, both got these forged faces in, both hollow body construction, one has a foam injection in it. How much difference does that make? We're going to find out. I'm going to hit some balls, wait for that lawnmower to finish, and then we'll have a little bit of a further chat and discussion. So we'll start with the P790. Um, like I said, for me, it's been really good club from uh, TaylorMade this year. I think it's ticked a lot of boxes, and I think it's, uh, as from what I can gather, been a real big seller and a popular club for TaylorMade, and there's lots of reasons why. It's kind of plenty forgiving, nice looking, got decent bit of feel in there. It's getting plenty of yardage out there and support and help for people who are looking for it. There's, it ticks a lot of boxes. Um, and like I said, for me, it's in the bag in the, in the longer irons. Good start with the P790, hit some more golf balls and uh, then we'll move over onto this i500 and then look at some numbers. Right 
Right, so on to the i500, and I think for me, this is this, it is without doubt a neater looking profile. So, if something that you're looking for is that more compact head, if that plays a major part in your choice of iron, then I would say i500 ticks the box and uh, it's certainly more compact in looking. It certainly looks like that player's iron. Let's see how it performs. First thing that I notice, and I'm going to talk about the ball flight performance in terms of what it's done, is fine. I have a major issue with the sound of the i500s, I'm afraid, and that's first ball in. I don't want to start off on too much of negative because, but it will certainly creep into my uh, assessment at the end because straight away, one ball in, it's the first thing I notice. Like I said, I just don't like the sound, I'm afraid. that This hollow body construction without the injection of the foam is the only logic I can pour on it between why the difference in sound is so much because it literally does sound like a hollow club. One more ball while the camera's on and I'll see if that changes at all, but I'm not, I'm not feeling that sound at all. That's a super shot. I don't know whether you can pick it up on camera, whether the, 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 the noise is as apparent between, or the difference in noise between that and the P790, I don't know. But like I said, for me, it's the one issue that I pick up on straight away. Anyway, carry on hitting some golf balls and uh, like I said, sit down. Have a look how these two compare in dry ball data at least. Right, so that's golf balls hit, and uh, let's get straight into the numbers, and then we'll talk about my overall opinion on what's the difference between these two clubs, although I think I've given a clue already. But let's start off with the numbers from the i500. One thing this does, I think it's worth noting, let's, before I put those numbers up, you notice my spin number has changed in recent videos quite considerably, really, of probably about a thousand revs, maybe even more on average. I don't think that's all necessarily down to the clubs. If you've been watching my videos for quite some time, then you have to bear in mind that there's been some swing changes that have allowed my spin number to rise a little bit, probably lost a little bit of distance as well. But just bear that in mind if you're a long-term viewer. The clubs aren't all of a sudden producing mega spin, I don't think. Um, anyway, spin number 6A is very, very good and very, very similar to last week's testing. Carry distance of on average 153. Again, probably about four or five yards shorter than what I was achieving in last week's video, but then swing speed was that little bit faster as well. So very much consistent in terms of the video and performance from last week. Um, we've got peak height 87 feet, launching at 18.3, ball speed of 113. Um, very consistent ball speed, only the last shot dropped off there to 108. The others are between 111 and 114. I think, again, the one thing I'd say about the i500 is consistent performance. If we look closely at my at the club face, as I always say with the average golfer and the handicap and the level of golf that I play, I will be finding all around that club face, I don't care what anybody says, there is definitely support across that club face and consistent performance across that club face from these clubs that we've seen over the last couple of years. And the i500 does that very, very well indeed. So consistent, very, very consistent in performance. Let's start the numbers now for a P790. So it's a, um, again, identical loft, identical shaft. This one, slightly lower spin on average, 6249, but again with seven iron, absolutely fantastic. And compare that to what I was testing a year ago, for me personally, a spin number up by quite considerable amount is, uh, is good to see. 152.9, again, almost identical in the yardage. Uh, club head speed was identical with this as well on average so again very good comparisons peak height 84 as opposed to 87 we're talking on average here don't forget 18.1 launch as opposed to 18 launch again identical 111 ball speed 113 ball speed 
threw a couple in there, a three of their ball speed dropped off to 108. And again, I think all this really shows in terms of the two sets of numbers is very much diff. It's all about the strike that is put on the ball by the individual. So the clubs themselves, I think performance wise, are very, very similar indeed. Ball speeds drop off at certain times and that'll be to do with the strike position on the club face. However, they don't drop off to a level and performance doesn't drop off to a level that you're seeing massive differences in performance. So again, shortest ball on the P790s was 146, longest ball 157. There's a 10 yard gap, but there'll be a big difference in performance on strike. I don't know what level of golf you play at, but I can certainly live with that and accept that when I hit a bad shot, if it's 10 yards shorter than my best shot, that's not doing too bad whatsoever, as long as dispersion is good. Let's throw that chart up as well. I tend to be a little bit straighter, but you can see yet again, average golfer, average performance, pretty much sprayed them all over the place and what you'd expect from my kind of level of golfer. We can't really, I don't think, pinpoint anything in terms of the club's performance there. But again, what I would say is consistency in terms of that front to back number with both clubs has been very, very good indeed. So the overall assessment is this. I think two really good performing golf clubs that tick a lot of boxes. They, there is forgiveness in both of those club faces. They are compact. The slightly more compact is the i500 lux is very much down to the individual i don't know i i don't know which i'd prefer to be quite honest i quite like the look of both of these clubs i think that in terms of the only major difference for me and i've said it in the video so there's where the uh, there's no secret here is the sound it's just there's a much better sound for me on the P790s and I really do believe that's because of the, of the injection of the foam material that's in the P790s. That's what seems to be the obvious reason. It is that less hollow sound, but it's a massive difference for me and it's why I would choose the P790s as opposed to the i500s. And I think the next thing we will see uh, in the next release, probably next year from Ping, is you'll see that uh, the first thing we'll say is improved acoustics. That'll be their big thing that they go for. There'll be some kind of dampener in there for the sound. And I think once they've done that, they've got a real winner that's ticking every box. So if you're interested in either of these sets of clubs, as ever, these head to heads for me, they're a bit of a, I don't know, novelty kind of thing. It's all about strike on the day, but hopefully it gives you a bit of a guide as to at least my thoughts on it. You can see there's very much, very little difference between these two clubs uh, for me right across the board. It's all about, like I said, you getting out there, you getting custom fit, you trying them, seeing what you like the sound of, what you like the feel of, what you like the look of, which is, I know, pretty obvious stuff, but uh, that's the way that uh, clubs should always be purchased. As ever, if you like the video, then uh, please hit that thumbs up. I always appreciate any kind of feedback, so comments in the comments box below, and subscribe if you don't already, and I will see you very, very soon. That's me done. See you soon.